Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, Facebook. It is Wednesday. Um, we are getting ready to embrace our first big storm of the year, of the winter season. Um, hope everybody's ready for it. Uh, hopefully it's a little milder than they're saying. Um, it is um, today, Wednesday the 16th. And I just want to go over to my Facebook page here so I can see people tuning in. If they're making comments, it's easier for me to do that. There we go. Um, oh, no, that's yesterday's live. I clicked. Here's today's live. All right, perfect. Um, so it's about 7 a.m. in the morning. I've been working for the last about hour, hour and a half, um, building our grocery list. Uh, grocery sales have been increasing a lot. Um, and uh, we're trying to make, we're trying to offer more groceries on our list. So um, we're more of a one-stop uh, for people that are buying groceries. So we're offering more. So we have a bunch of really um, new, a lot, I mean, a lot of new things are coming in. So we have to bring it in. We have to price it. We have to program the scale. We do the graphic arts. We got to get it posted. So it's a lot when we bring new, when it's not when we bring one item in. We literally probably brought in another 15 items yesterday. Um, and put it on the grocery list. So, and more different items are coming in today. So we really appreciate all of the support that we're getting from the grocery sales here. That's one of the one key factor that's kept us alive this year is the grocery sales. Um, Jamie and I are working harder than ever, um, but this is our passion, this is our business, and we don't want to give up. And um, one out of six restaurants already in the US have folded, over 100,000 restaurants. Um, and I believe that's going to get much, much, much worse. Uh, the first round, um, I don't think, has fully taken effect yet of shutdowns of what's really going to happen to restaurants. So um, a lot of restaurants are just barely holding on now that winter's here. Um, they're uh, they're not going to make it. Um, and other restaurants are doing very well. Um, I know for us here that we've been um, we had our first like really, really slow week right after Thanksgiving, which is which is kind of normal. And then December is a slower month as far as people walking in to eat. But as far as um, catering parties, it's a very busy month for us. Except for this year, nobody's really having holiday parties. Um, so we've lost all of our catering business, most of our catering business for this month. We've done a couple of parties, but nothing major. Um, if you want to do something here on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, the restaurant is closed those nights. So you can have the restaurant to yourself. If you're 20 people or 30 people, that's 50% of our capacity. Our, actually, occupancy is 80% here in the restaurant. So realistically, we could fit 30 people in here very comfortably. The building's closed. If you want to do a holiday party on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, that's very easy. And um, we had one of those last week and I had like 18 people. Um, so then you don't have to worry about other guests coming in and takeouts and things like that. The whole place is yours. But not many people are getting together. So, um, to do parties. So this has been a major, major revenue, um, decrease for us for December. So this is why we're really focusing on groceries. Um, we're focusing on our new Airbnb project and we are also, um, uh, focusing on other people's Airbnbs. So this is why we're bringing in all these other products. And our goal is if you're to check into an Airbnb in the area, whether you're two people or whether you're 10 people or even 20 people, you really go down our menu and pick all your breakfast items all your proteins, all your cheeses, vegetables, charcuteries, whatever, juices, wines, and we'll be able to stock that Airbnb when you check in. So it, it is basically, um, people from New York City don't typically go to the store to shop. They use Fresh Direct and everything gets shipped right to them. Some of our biggest, um, our biggest uh, clients or guests uh, on grocery sales are people that are from New York City that are used to that on a regular basis. So we're going to keep moving forward with that. So good morning to everybody who's tuning in. Um, so let's see, um, granola. Granola is super tricky to buy. Um, if you want to buy a really high quality granola and people, here's the misconception. People automatically think that granola is healthy. Automatically, like, so if you were to go buy a granola bar in the store or buy granola, most people think, oh, it's granola. Like what's wrong with granola? Granola is known to be loaded with refined sugars, known to be. And then the bars in the store are total junk a lot of times. Well, those are produced by big companies. Um, and I remember years ago, one of our staff members walked in, I'm eating healthy today, Marcus, and showed me a granola bar. I'm like, do you know what's in there? Well, no, I don't, it's granola. 
a label and read it to her and I said, she was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea this was like inside of here. Folks, you have to read labels. You have to read labels. If you're concerned about what you're putting into your body, you've got to read labels. Um, there's been so many times here that things get sent to us and we don't like it and we send it back because they put something funky in it. And a lot of times the salespeople don't know just because they're, they're not in that business. They're, they're not in the, you know, in the, in the, in the food ingredient business. Uh, but stores I always tell people when you go to the, when you go to the store to buy something, the front cover of the package is their billboard. And they're going to write all these good things like 100% of the vitamin C, daily vitamin C. Folks, you could whisper vitamin C on top of a box of cereal and get your daily recommended allowance. That's how low the RDA is for a lot of these things. So they meet the recommended daily allowance by basically putting in these low amounts or these amounts that are, that are, that are made to be lower than they should be. And, um, and people say, oh, it has, you know, 100% of vitamin C, it has this much fiber, it has this, this. And you turn it over and you have high fructose corn syrup, you have other refined sweeteners, you have white flour, um, you have chemicals, you have stabilizers, um, you have funky stuff, you have GMO. So you can't, imagine a pack of cigarettes Imagine if they were to douse cigarettes with vitamin C, just enough to meet the minimum. Imagine if the cigarettes had, on the front cover, meets 100% of your daily vitamin C. And you're like, well, gee, I'm getting my vitamin C. Well, no, look what's actually in the package. So I always teach people to read the label. So when you buy granola, you must read the label. One of the best ones that we've found, even if you buy, like, even if you buy an organic granola, when you buy organic granola, you, they still use organic sugar, all right? So organic, you know, in the restaurant industry, it's hard not to use sugar. It's hard not to use food, sugar when you're cooking. It's in everything, it's everywhere, especially Asian restaurants. Asian restaurants are notorious. Um, I have, um, sometimes I have Ming working for me. If anybody knows Ming here in town, we used to have Ming Moon. Um, he'll do some work for me from time to time. Him and I have been friends for years. And um, he'll also help me, out, help me out at the camp that we that we run in the summertime, the kitchen there. And whenever I've had him make teriyaki in the past or any kind of these Asian sauces, I was shocked at first. I mean, it's like, where'd my, turn around, he goes, Ming, where'd my organic sugar go? And he goes, I make the sauce with it. I said, how much sugar did you use? And he showed me. So Ming and I have a joke, I call him the sugar chef. Because anything that he cooks in the Asian and the Chinese world is loaded, loaded, loaded with sugar and they offset it by adding vinegar. So this is where the sweet and sour taste comes from in the balance of sugar. They set it off with a ton of vinegar. So they literally take a gallon of vinegar and you know, and 10 pounds of sugar and put it together and that's like a base for a lot of their sauces. Um, all those sauces that have that nice glycerin, that, sh that, that shininess on them and that viscosity, that's coming from a very, very high amount of sugar to build that viscosity and a little bit of cornstarch. Um, to maybe round it out as far as as far as the consistency. So if you were to actually read the ingredients of Chinese food, so for example, if you bought General Chow's chicken and you read the ingredients, the first ingredient might logistically be sugar before chicken because that's how much sugar they put in it. That might be an exaggeration, but I'm just saying there is a ton more sugar in this food than you could have ever possibly imagined. And it could be organic sugar if they're using organic sugar. Um, but at the, the end of the day, sugar's still sugar. So um, we, if people who have our desserts here are like, oh, your desserts are perfect, they're not overly sweet because we don't abuse sugar like that. Um, my favorite sweetener is evaporated coconut blossom sap. Evaporated coconut blossom, it's not nearly as sweet as sugar. Um, it's pulverized, it's dried and powdered. It looks like brown sugar. It's loaded with minerals. If you're gonna use a dry sweetener, a dry sugar, um, if you could say it's the healthiest, it would be the healthiest. It has the most minerals, enzymes, all that kind of stuff. It's really, it's really an amazing product. Plus it has a lot of flavor based upon just sugar. So we use that in our blueberry crisp. We use that in several different of our recipes for desserts. So people say, oh gee, your desserts are great. They're, they're not overly sweet, um, which is awesome. They're just sweet enough, our blueberry crisp. Um, our chocolate tort. So, um, good morning everybody tuning in. Hi Connie, hi Cheryl. Um, just drop a comment, hashtag live if you're tuning in live. So I wanted to talk about the granola that I, that we use in our store here on our grocery list, which is New England Naturals. New England Naturals uh, organic granola. Uh, we buy their um, walnut raisin cinnamon. Uh, first ingredient, organic whole grain oats. Then 
It is sweetened, but it's sweetened with apple juice. Um, it's sweetened with apple juice. Then it has other good things in it, like organic raisins, organic walnuts, organic sunflower seeds, organic dried apricots, organic oat flour, and organic cinnamon. So everything across the board is organic on it. Um, it's on our list. It comes in one or two pound pouches. Um, it comes like, it comes in pouches like this. This is our Cavatelli pasta from Spofalini. Um, we buy bigger bags of these pastas. Because we use them in the kitchen and then we package a few and put them out on our shelves. So could you, it's hard for people to buy five or 10 pounds of pasta like that. So we've been trying to break off and they've been going really, really, really well. Um, we just added, onion greens, dried porcinis, $6.99 an ounce, dried porcinis, they're here. Um, we gotta put a label on them and seal them. Um, we just started packaging those yesterday, $6.99 an ounce. Real Italian porcinis. Part of the issue with porcinis, dried porcinis. Porcinis grow work, grow in so many places of the world, like so many places, and people associate the word porcini with Italian. In Italy, it's called, they're called seps. In um, Germany, they're called steinpils. So they're, they're just the same mushroom, different names. And they go way beyond France and way beyond Germany. They grow here in the US, they grow here in New York. They have really good ones in Colorado. When I lived in Colorado, I had a forager go out um, and would pick hundreds of pounds of these and um, we were hooked up with a great company that I buy a lot of exotic stuff from. And we used to actually sell back to this company um, mushrooms. And they used to get, they used literally our mushrooms that this guy would forage and I would broker. We get shipped to Jean George, they get shipped all over the country. Uh, French Laundry is a really high end company, especially company that we were, I was buying from when I was in a restaurant out there. And um, so porcinis grow all over. They grow in China, they grow in. Um, all through Romania, um, Bul uh, Bulgaria, um, Hungary. So they, they grow all through Europe as well. So one of the tricks that a lot of these companies do is they will buy porcinis from other countries, put an Italian name on it and pretend like it's an Italian product. Um, when indeed um, it came from somewhere else in the world. Are they better or are they worse? Not really. Would you like to know the difference? You probably should know what you're buying. It's your right to know everything that you're buying. So because something um, looks like a duck and it's not a duck, you should know that. So if it's an Italian porcini and they're portraying themselves as an Italian porcini company, um, and this happens with a lot of Italian products, the, the love affair with Italian food is immense. People all around the US, especially around the US and even globally, People love Italian food. Well, they can't keep up with, that little country cannot keep up with demand with all of the products. So this is why in the US, there's a lot of fake Italian products like Parmesan cheese. Um, and there just is no, there is no recourse um, as far as legally um, for Italy. They don't, they don't go after people here in the US. So they can't because the US made it kind of impossible to do that. Um, but vice versa, if they were to, fake one of our products in Italy, our um, government would go after them, our attorneys would go after them, just because that's how we are, we're a double standard like that when it comes to food um, protection. So we don't want other countries doing what we do, but we can fake what other countries do. This is li li literally how the law works. So um, you have to have a really, really good attorney, um, attorneys in those countries to come after US companies to really stop them. Uh, the one successful organization that has been very, very successful at stopping imitation stuff is Champagne. Champagne really, really goes after anybody in the US or anybody worldwide that pops the word Champagne on the bottle, um, puts the word Champagne, they really go after them. You have to use other names like traditional method, bottle fermentation, bottle fermentation, but traditional method is a, something that most companies can get away with as long as they're doing the traditional bottle, bottle fermented method. Um, so uh, it's uh, uh, Kobe beef. Kobe beef is probably one of the most commonly, commonly um, abused words out there when it comes, especially in the, in the beef world. Grass-fed is misunderstood a lot of times, um, but Kobe beef, they produce such little, little Kobe um, that there's not enough Kobe to even go around in Japan. So when Kobe does make it here, it is very, um, very, very, very expensive and very, very, very limited. And a lot of people compute, confuse any other Japanese beef with Kobe. So, oh, this is Kobe beef. Just because it came from Japan does not mean it's Kobe. Kobe is a very, very, very specific um, way of doing 
um, cattle in um, in Kobe, Kobe, Japan, and they only they only process a couple hundred animals a year. That's it, a couple hundred animals a year. So when you have a restaurant that says they're serving, serving Kobe burgers, and they're and they're cranking out 500 burgers a month or a thousand burgers a month. That is not true at all. Um, that is either a Japanese style beef. Um, American Wagyu um, is popular. People will take American Wagyu and call it Kobe because they think it's the same and it's not. Um, most American Wagyu, most American Wagyu, not all, but most American Wagyu is simply Angus beef that then gets inseminated, impregnated with um, Japanese lineage. Um, so it's a 50-50 blend. And the male, the bull, is not even there. Um, it's not even there to do the job. They just basically buy and, um, and inseminate. So that's how that's done. Um, so it's not like, oh, they even had the Japanese bull on the farm. They didn't even have that on the farm. Um, and it's a 50-50 blend, and that's what they call, a lot, of, a lot of producers will call American Wagyu that. So a lot of confusion in the, in, in the, in the, in the food world here, like lots of confusion. Some of the confusion comes from greed because a lot of these um, chefs, restaurant owners, producers know they can charge premium prices when they start getting fancy with these adjectives and some of these adjectives could be misleading you into um, purchasing things like wild salmon instead of farm-raised salmon. So, all right, so um, New England Naturals. Uh, it's back in stock. We had it, it was gone for a couple of days, like literally three, four days. Last week we sold our last one and the new patch came in today. Yesterday, uh, New England Naturals Granola, so that's here in stock. Um, I would tell you to go look at our list right now for groceries, but it's not up to date. It's gonna be up to date here in another day or so. I've literally had my assistant, uh, Hiver, working. Oh, gee, that's all he's been doing since Saturday. That's all he's been doing um, every shift is updating our grocery, graphic cards, adding descriptions, making it nice, putting pictures in so you can see exactly what you're buying when you look at the pictures on the website. Instead of just scrolling down this big document, you're like, okay, where am I going? So now a picture could pop out at you. Oh, prosciutto, I need prosciutto, I need soppressata. Oh, buffalo mozzarella there, oh, pasta, oh, tomatoes, oh, porcinis, oh, wine, oh, this wine, that wine. So we're working really, really hard on that. So that'll be up very soon, I promise. Um, so. And the other topic that I want to touch upon briefly is salmon, because our nine ninety nine weekly special is salmon this week. Um, salmon with our dill mustard sauce, wild coho salmon. So I'm going to drop some facts every day um, about salmon, just to be just to make people aware of what's going on in the salmon world. So I'll make this brief and just make one point, because I could literally do a lecture of eight hours on salmon. Same thing with chocolate or salt or any of these um, food ingredients that I'm passionate about. So um, I'm gonna try to get um, Bill Bryden on. Um, I sent him a message, I'm just waiting for him to answer. I'm trying to, he's, he is a whiz at this kind of stuff because he's up on the east coast of Canada where the salmon farms are and he experiences firsthand the devastation, um, the die off, um, some of the bays there. Um, he's described in the summer times, there's so much die off of salmon in the farms that um, all that fat from the salmons and the warm water will surface in the dead fish and coat the shore with this stench and this like fatty oil residue from the salmon farms. That's how bad salmon farms get. And what they do is they pull the salmon out of there, dead, and who knows where it goes. It goes somewhere, right? They're not stupid. They're not just gonna throw it in a landfill typically. They're probably rendering it down for cat food. So when your cat food says made with real salmon, your dog food is made with real salmon, it's probably that kind of stuff, I'm assuming. Uh, if, if they can get away with charging, get, making any kind of revenue, they will. That's just the way this works. And besides the Canadian government, um, gives them full price for everything that they lose, which is terrible. Um, so in Canada, you can have a salmon die off, as, kill off a whole salmon farm because you're just being, basically running a, a, a normal operation that's run, that's just crap to begin with. Um, and they were so powerful in lobbying the Canadian government, buying the Canadian government, that all these Norwegian salmon farms get full value for their salmon. So there's no, there's no incentive for them to do, the, to do even a better operation. I can't even say the right thing because there is no, there is no right way to do, do the wrong thing when it comes to open pen salmon farms. So, and these are the same salmon farms that'll tell you how clean their salmon is, how pure, pristine, how clean the water is, 
how they don't use antibiotics. And these are the same salmon farms that tell you this and they're facing die off um, on all, on, it's, it's, it's part of the game. So, all right, so here's my point today on wild salmon versus farm salmon. Farmed salmon takes three times the amount of, so, you, so it takes three pounds of, of wild harvested um, sea life, protein, three pounds to gain one pound of salmon. So when you think you're eating farmed salmon to save the environment, to save our, to save the food supply, because here it's a farm and they can raise it more efficiently and we can, we can get more, like there's so many people that think, oh, salmon uh, farming, fish farming is the way of the future and salmon farming, you know, is really a way of the future and it's gonna save food, it's gonna help with production. We have to, we have a growing population. What are we gonna do? More salmon, more salmon farms, more salmon farms, more salmon farms. For every pound of salmon that makes it to the plate, there's three pounds of wild caught fish going in there to make that one pound. So we're at a net deficit of protein. So if we're concerned about feeding the world and we're concerned about higher yields, we're concerned about that, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. You're automatically deficit. There's one company in, in, um, in um, uh, Chile, that Verlasso, that um, gets high nods from uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium because they genetically modify fungus instead of going out and harvesting wild fish. So it's a genetically modified laboratory created fungus that they use as the main source of protein for this fish. Um, Frankenfish, probably so. Um, I don't know if, um, it's just, yeah, you, you don't know where I'm going with this. It's, it's who knows what that fish nutrition nutritional comp, uh, composition really is who knows what's really in that fish who who knows i don't know it's genetically modified fungus that goes into it but the um the uh monterey bay aquarium seafood watch gives them high nods because they're not out harvesting wild fish and they're leaving the wild fish in the ocean to raise more fish so trade-off i guess makes them look better um i questioned monterey bay aquarium i called them i spoke to them I said, I disagree with your findings. Um, how can you name something safer when we, there's no long-term studies on this genetically modified fungus? And you know, there's no, there's no, there's, there's nothing, there's, you have no data supporting that this is a healthy option. And the only data you're going on is that you're not harvesting wild fish. And I um, let them know uh, how I felt about it. And of course, you know, you talk to somebody, but you, you never know what happens. So, but I let them know about that. Um, Cause I was really puzzled why that farm got a high rating. And that's what they told me. So, um, you know, we're do the wrong thing. Three pounds of wild fish go into one pound of farmed salmon. So that's the first reason. I'll drop another comment tomorrow, another topic tomorrow on that. Um, maybe we can get Bill Bryden in or I can get somebody else in to do a little Facebook Live with us um, and um, drop, some more, drop some more interesting facts about that. But all week long, 9.99. Uh, we're closed tonight, back open tomorrow night. Um, it's gonna be snow, of course. Um, Next, who knows how long? We're around all day if anybody wants to yep. pick up salmon. If you want to pick up salmon to cook at home, we are here all day today. Last night we were here. We were closed last night. We were here and we did several hundred dollars worth of grocery sales. Um, we're here all day. We can easily pull salmon uh, for you. Any, we, any of our any of our groceries. Any of our groceries. Um, the granola that I'm talking about. Anything. Um, we just got endangered species chocolates in. Chocolate bars in. That's really cool. Um, Field Day Organic, Organic Jelly just came in. Uh, Field Day is a Belgian company doing really awesome products. Um, let's see. Um, mustard, we just got a honey mustard in. We just got a honey mustard in. We just uh, got beet juice back. Beet juice is back. Mango juice is in. Apple juice. Apple juice, organic apple juice is back in stock. Health noodles. If anybody uses agave, can you hand the agave, James, and the agave? So if anybody, if anybody, what is it, $59 on this? So if anybody uses agave and needs agave um, on a regular basis, this is the way to go. This is a full gallon of wholesome sweeteners. Uh, this is their agave. It's a full gallon. It's $59. If you go online, the cheapest you can search this online is like $71 to $75. Uh, here we have it for $59. We try to keep our prices competitive. There's a few, there's a couple of things that we just don't buy right or we can't buy right. So we're not in the price range, but we're not far out of the price range. We know maybe a dollar more, 50 cents more. But most things we're trying to keep within that price range. Um, new peanut butter, creamy sea salt, um, certified organic, um, really good stuff. 
Another Fire Organic. Uh, Nutiva's back in stock. This is one of my favorite products. They shorted us on this, so we only got one case in Nutiva. This is, if you like, this is organic, organic chocolate hazelnut spread. If you like Nutella, but not all the funky ingredients of Nutella, this is your go-to. This Nutiva is amazing. It's chocolate hazelnut spread, certified organic, no dairy in it. Nutella has dairy in it. They put whey in it. Um, it's just what they do. It's part of the recipe. Um, this is plant-based. There is no dairy in it. Um, really awesome stuff. So, um, marsh mini marshmallows are back in from Dandies. Dandies out of Chicago makes these marshmallows that are gluten-free, GMO-free, kosher, vegan, um, with the cleanest marshmallow out there. Um, when I say vegan, um, they can have egg whites in them typically, and they can have gelatin in them from pork. So um, that's the story with that. So these marshmallows are great. We also have the larger ones too, um, which we have to call them back today. We ordered direct from them. Um, we have an order coming in this week of the larger ones, and we have one bag left. So one and a half well, they're one and a half pounds, the larger bags. These are 10 ounces. The ones with the larger marshmallows are one and a half pounds. It's actually a food service pack, so you get to save, it, save some more money. It's a really, really good value in a food service pack. Um, cherry tomatoes from Italy. This is the last can until today. Um, these will be back in. These are amazing, these cherry tomatoes. These are from Campania. Um, if you go to Sogno Toscano, if you go to Sogno Toscano, S-O-G-N-O, -O, Sogno Toscano, T-O-S-C-N-O, I can get anything from that website. I can get anything from that website here within, within the week. Anything that's on there is a tremendous savings, all right? So our Tirales that come from there are a dollar cheaper a bag. Our artichokes are $10 cheaper a can, a better value. Anything that comes from that company, Sonia Toscano, we can have here. Um, it comes every Wednesday, and it is a better price than on the website. You don't have to pay shipping. So if you're looking for any Italian ingredients, um, go to Sonia Toscano and um, look at what they have. And uh, we can easily get you anything on there um, if there's something cool. We have uh, we we'll now have a whole artichoke page. We have creamed artichokes, which is really really good. Um, there's actually there's, there's actually no cream in them, but they're it's an artichoke spread. Um, it's in it's in sunflower oil or olive oil. I can't read it in the dark there. You can put it on bread. You can. Uh, this is really good. Stuffing. Yeah, for bruschetta. You can put it in sauces. You can put this in raviolis. If you want to stuff a ravioli with this, this is awesome. If you just want to take crackers and dip it in here like hummus, it's amazing. Make bruschetta with it. Um, this with a little bit of cream to make an artichoke cream sauce for pasta mm. is amazing. So this is one of the artichoke products. Next we have a bigger artichoke can um, of quarters. And then we have smaller artichokes coming today packed in oil that are already grilled. So three different types of artichokes. Artichokes are one of my favorite foods. I love artichokes. Um, and a lot of people do like artichokes, but they don't like cooking artichokes because they're a pain in the ass to cook. Um, if you ever cooked a raw artichoke, they have this chemical on them that will screw up anything it touches, your cutting board, your knife, your fingers. If you ever attempt to do artichokes at home, raw artichokes, and you're gonna clean them, do not use all separate, separate utensils, use a separate cutting board, put on gloves, and do not, do not touch your mouth at all because it'll screw up your palate. Um, and especially if you're gonna be drinking wine afterwards, um, it's really, really, really not good. Once you cook it, that dumbs it way down and it's a lot easier to handle. But in a raw state, oh my gosh. Um, I forgot what that chemical's called that's in them, that, that whatever that, that, that part of the artichokes are. But it will screw everything up. So if you literally, if you literally cut an artichoke on a cutting board at your house, and even if you just wiped it down, all of a sudden you started cutting cucumbers and tomatoes for a salad, that will transfer onto there and you'll get that flavor onto the cucumbers. And you'll be like, what's wrong with these cucumbers I just bought? So um, artichokes are great for people, a lot of labor and, um, and some pain in the ass to do. So um, artichokes, we have three different types of artichokes in inventory now in stock. So that's it. All right, folks, I um, have to get out of here. I have to head to the Airbnb and um, let people in, the construction crew or 
finishing up the theater. Uh, it's being painted right now. Uh, seats are going in, carpet's going down. The big commercial popcorn maker is in there. It's really, really cool. We got this great popcorn maker. Um, it's literally on a stand and it can roll around. It's like an industrial popcorn, 1300 watt popcorn machine. Really, really cool. That came in the other day and got some other cool stuff coming in today. That project's coming very, very well. Most of it's done. We have guests coming in next week and um, we are, um, once, once, once everything's done, I'll post a lot more pictures and there'll be an amazing place for weddings. So if you know anybody that is getting married, if you're getting married, uh, you can have the whole place to yourself for the weekend. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic venue for that. And um, that's one of the main reasons we jumped onto this to be able to cater weddings. Um, be able to cater, we love catering weddings. Jamie loves, Jamie loves working with brides. I mean, she, Jamie goes above and beyond with every bride she works with because she likes, she just, not only does she like the part of the food, but she likes the part of the wedding planning. So she's really into the planning aspect. So she always like, I'll do this, I'll do that for you, I'll do that for you. And Jamie's like sort of like the unofficial um, um, assistant to the wedding planner. And um, so she loves doing that stuff. If Jamie, if we didn't have the restaurant, you'd probably be a restaurant a restaurant coordinator, wouldn't you? I, I mean, a, a wedding coordinator. Yeah. Wedding coordinator, right? Probably, yeah. Or you'd help with home births. Yes. Both. <laughs> from home births to weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie would. From weddings to home births. <laughs> from home births. Yeah. From weddings, weddings to weddings to home births. Jamie. Jamie would have you have you covered for the first couple of years. <laughs> so um, she loves both of those. Um, so um, this property allows us to store and have everything there and have a kitchen there to run around the Hudson Valley um, and have a portable kitchen and take food. We we do it and it works. But it's a lot easier when it's your own property, your own stuff is there, your own, everything's there. It's a lot, lot easier to do. So that is the plan for that. If you're interested in getting a wedding, the rental on the property is probably gonna be about 15,000 for the weekend. And then plus, you know, the tent rental and other things and the catering. So if anybody knows me that's getting married, um, that's the situation at the house. Both pieces, uh, both houses are yours for the whole weekend. Um, your guests have plenty of room there. Um, the house sleeps 22, both properties sleep 22 people. Um, so um, you can have your immediate family stay in this and that, and then um, your guests will come in for the day. Plenty of parking, um, lots and lots of acreage, so it's really, really awesome. So, all right, folks, um, so I gotta get up to the house there, speaking of that, and I hope everybody has a great day. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. So. Um, we have mimosas available too, they're tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, if people are snowed in at home? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, mimosa kits, if you're snowed in tomorrow, if you want to sit at your fireplace and look out the window and drink a mimosa, um, we have the, uh, the sparkling bubbles and the organic orange juice in stock. Um, bagels are back in stock from HH &H Bagels. We got two cases in, and we sold a lot of them already, didn't we, Jamie? We did, and we had somebody show up. Yeah, so I, we had another delivery on Saturday for HH &H Bagels. Like, they are flying out of here. Today comes organic cream cheese. Tomorrow comes plant-based, dairy-free cream cheese. So we'll have both cream cheeses covered um, for you on that. So, and then smoked wild salmon will be here next week. Um, we had a couple different companies that could do it for us. And it was all about um, convenience, about getting it, the nature of the product. And of course, um, we were able to get one of the one. And with those two attributes, we were able to get one with the best price, which worked out really, really good. So... That's it for that. Got to get out of here, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Everybody have an amazing, amazing day. Enjoy the snow. Um, if you are um, have a snowblower and you haven't started it yet, go out and start it. Um, we did that yesterday and we found out it didn't work. And so I had to run down to Ace Hardware here in Ellenville. And I text Brian. I said, Brian, I need to bring the, the snowblower down. Um, he goes, well, I'm, it's we're busy. And I go, well, it doesn't start, so I couldn't use it anyway. And if it did snow, he goes, okay, good point. Um, he goes, if it was anything but the carburetor, carbu if it was a carburetor, he couldn't get it out quick enough for the snow, but um, it wasn't the carburetor. So uh, he said there was like 10 more in front of me and they were able to get it done yesterday. So thank you, Ace Hardware here in Ellenville. Thank you, Brian, for doing that. Um, so appreciate that. Um, that's one of the nice things about shopping local and buying local things, uh, which is more important than ever now. Uh, we bought two riding lawnmowers from Ace here and I bought my um, snowblower from Ace. And it would have been easy to go to Lowe's and, and save a hundred bucks. Um, but when you buy a product from this place, it's easier for them to service it and they're happy to service products that they sell. So, um, 
that's the situation with that. So uh, they tuned it up yesterday, and it is ready to rock and roll. All right, folks, talk to you later. Got to go.